Okay, ladies and gents, uh, welcome back to um, Exchange Rates and Balance of Payments. So this is part five, uh, the narrated PowerPoints on uh, now moving on to look at the balance of payments. Okay, so um, we've talked about exchange rates. Uh, clearly, exchange rates are going to have a massive impact on the balance of payments, which essentially is the difference between uh, the trade that international trade that uh, we do with different countries and then the uh, amount of imports and exports that uh, that we have um, that comprise the, that uh, that trade so um, basically the balance of payments covers specification 4.1.7 um, and we've got to understand as students um, what the different components of the balance of payments so we've got the current account um, we've got uh, also the uh, financial, the capital and financial accounts. Um, but then also we're going to look at um, different types of um, uh, causes of deficits and surpluses on the current account um, and then also measure measures that are put in place to try to reduce the country's imbalance that it might have on the, their on its current account. And then also um, the last part of the specification as far as the balance of payments is concerned is the significance of global trade imbalances. Okay, so let's move on from there. Okay, so uh, first and foremost, a little bit of an activity for you. Um, so what you'll need to do is uh, open the PowerPoint um, that obviously I'm narrating at the moment. I will have sent that to you. Uh, and I want you to just have a little go at completing this uh, inflow and outflow of money from uh, the UK. But before we do that, let's just take a look at what the balance of payments is, if, if you like a definition. Um, and basically what the balance of payments is, is a set of accounts which record all, all flows of money between the residents of that country and the rest of the world. So money coming in and money going out of the country um, in various different ways. Um, we'll look at some of those examples together but what I'd like you to do is to take as an example we'll do one together and then I'll give you some time to have a go at doing the rest yourself so is this uh, example here that we're just going to click through now is that if Seville, Seville oranges uh, what would Seville oranges be would they be an inflow or an outflow of money uh, for the UK it does rather depend on knowing uh, on you know where Seville is but in this instance Seville is um, uh, the big one of the big uh, centers for orange production in Spain. So in that instance, if we were buying Spanish oranges uh, into the UK, that would be an outflow of money. We'd be spending some of our hard-earned cash uh, to buy those Seville oranges. Okay. Now there are, I think, about five or six other examples which uh, get slightly more complicated as they go. Um, but I'd like you just to stop the PowerPoint, um, or I'll stop talking rather. Um, and I'd like you to flick through the PowerPoint and see which um, which answer you think is an inflow or an outflow. So I'll stop the PowerPoint here, um, have a go at that, and then uh, obviously we can uh, re, uh, re, uh, reconvene straight after that. Okay. So um, first question, Seville Oranges, uh, outflow. Second example, Welsh, Welsh lamb sold around the world. Well, if Welsh lamb is being sold around the world, then clearly we are getting money in for that as a purchase. So that would be an inflow into our balance of payments. What about BMW cars? Well, most of you would know, I think, that BMW is a German company. Um, and as a result of that, if we're buying uh, German cars, but BMW cars, that is going to be an outflow too. We're spending uh, sterling on uh, an imported good. In this case, it's uh, a BMW car. What about foreign students studying in the UK then? So if foreign students are coming to the UK and they are studying, well, clearly they're paying tuition fees and also they will be paying for accommodation um, and um, you know, living in the UK. So um, in this instance, that would actually be an inflow into the balance of payments. Next one, my holiday in Mallorca. Well, that would be nice to think that maybe we could get to Mallorca this year. We'll see, won't we? Um, but in this instance, um, if it's uh, a holiday in Mallorca, I'm using my sterling to buy euros in order to go to Spain and have a good time with my family. Um, and that would obviously be, in that case, an outflow from the balance of payments. So that would be money going out of the country rather than coming in. 
What about overseas visitors to London for over Easter then? Um, clearly, if we have overseas visitors, they are having to uh, exchange their um, currency for sterling or for pounds to be able to spend in London over the Easter period. So that would clearly be an inflow. And finally, last but not least, this is a bit of a trickier one. Can this stamp from Dublin? Okay, what would that be? In this instance, so Dublin is where? Is it uh, part of um, the UK? It's not, is it? So, because obviously it's outside of um, uh, outside of the UK in terms of uh, Dublin being part of uh, Southern Ireland as opposed to Northern Ireland. Um, and in that instance, you would get um, Guinness stout from Dublin would actually be an outflow. So we're spending money um, to buy stout from uh, Dublin. Okay. So that's just a few examples just to get you familiar with the principle of inflows and outflows. Now we're going to look in a little bit more detail at the definitions of the different parts of the balance of payments. Okay. So components then. Basically, we've got three that we need to consider. The first one, first component of the balance of payments is the current account, okay? And that essentially is the record of uh, a country's transactions of exports and imports. So if you like, it's almost the principal net trade that we, that we would look at. Um, however, it also includes the current account, inclusive any investment income and any transfers with the rest of the world. So that is the main part, the mainstay of the balance of payments, okay? We also have uh, something known as the uh, capital account. I'm just going to move that down a bit and move me down a bit so you can see the uh, text. Um, uh, and that's a relatively small um, uh, and, uh, part of the overall account, and it's a record of transfers of fixed assets. Okay. Now it's always going to be balancing with. Let me just move that one down as well. Okay. Yeah, there we go. Um, uh, it's always going to be balanced with um, the financial account, okay? And that's essentially almost how you finance the, the, the rest of the, um, the situation. So if we have a current account deficit, for instance, i.e. we're importing more than we export, clearly we're going to need to raise some money in order to buy those extra imports. So in that instance, the financial account is where we actually record any country's uh, financial transactions with the rest of the world, okay? So those are the three core components of the balance of payments. Let's have a look at them in a bit more detail then, okay? So the current account is always going to be measured in what's known as net balances. So that's basically taking um, outflows away from inflow. So not dissimilar to the way in which we try to calculate net trade when it comes to um, a component of aggregate demand okay um, so in this instance though the current account is broken down into a few things first and foremost as you'll see from your booklet um, we've got what's known as trading goods okay that's also sometimes known as visible trade and the reason it's visible trade is you can see that you're getting something for your money i.e you're swapping your currency for um, a consumer durable or some capital goods or uh, some commodity uh, of some description okay so some examples there that you can jot down in your booklet um, of different types of trade in goods okay so um, what I suggest you do again to try and sort of um, test yourself a wee bit is, is to have a go at completing this next bit before you look at the next slide um, or the next transition on the slide um, so the next thing that we're going to look at is trading services okay so also known as invisible trade so see if you can come up with some examples of the sorts of things that might be included in trading services invisible trade things that you can't see um, Bit of a clue maybe it's to do with us being in a service industry so you can't see the product or service essentially that you're providing it's um uh it is to do with the, the a service economy as opposed to a manufacturing economy okay so some examples there then okay so you've got trading goods as one part of the current account we've got trading services as the second part of the balance of payments um, and in this case the current account part of the, the balance of payments um, so in this instance again it's payments for of imports and exports of services okay and they include things like tourism uh, 
uh, travel, civil, civil aviation, insurance, a lot of the banking services, as you know, we have a massive um, surplus in terms of service, the services that we offer, um, as opposed to some of the uh, the negative uh, positions that we're in in terms of trade between uh, in, in goods. Um, but in trading services, we have got quite a, a strong track record, okay? Um, a number of examples there included, okay, that you can then uh, refer to should you need to uh, to explain a little bit more on the trade in goods and trade in services. Okay, so looking at the balance of trade then, so we've got a chart here showing, again, I'm going to move myself around a bit in order to show you exactly what we've uh, got going on here. So we've got, obviously, the year across the bottom of our um, graph here and then we've got the trade the balance in trade now we can see over a period of time really from to the 1999 onwards um we have had a negative balance of trade i.e um there we've been importing more than we've been exporting and that's a significant trend um and that probably over time is going to be um becoming even worse over, over time okay where we're less and less reliant on manufacturing as a source of income for the country um, then obviously we are having to buy more goods and services from other parts of the world in order to satisfy the requirements of our um, marketplaces and customers okay so um, let's, let's take a look. I'm moving myself around consistently now because I keep getting in the way. Um, I'll just pop myself down there again. Do apologise for that. Um, so let's look at some uh, other components of the, the balance of trade then, or the current account rather. Um, we've got something known as net investment income, which is another element. Okay, um, it's also sometimes known as primary income, um, and that is essentially profit and interest and dividends and income flows related to the factors of production. So land, labor, capital, and enterprise, if you like. So if we are making profits or interests from investments of those natures, uh, nature, um, then that is known as primary income or net investment income, okay? Can form part of the current account. We've also got something called current transfers, okay? And that's basically, government payments to international organizations okay sometimes known as secondary income um, but things like uh, foreign aid um, grif uh, grants and gifts that we might um, uh, issue either privately or governmentally um, uh, so foreign aid and the EU payment so obviously for us to become uh, us to remain as part of the EU we make a significant contribution to that in forms of, of uh, payments um, and then any any money that we pay towards the upkeep of the UN. So a um, number of things that obviously come together to uh, uh, calculate the, uh, the current account element of the balance of payments. Okay, so if we take a look at uh, the next um, slide here, it gives a little bit more detail in terms of the way in which the uh, current account balance is uh, worked out okay so we've got trade balances or trade imbalances as, as the case may be uh, we've got secondary income balance and then we've got a primary income balance so um, in this instance you can see how the current account position is made up of those three different elements okay and we can see the current account balance um, running as a blue line down through and you can see the current account balance consistently well below um, the zero the debt so we are in essentially in deficit in, in a sense we're spending more on uh, goods and services um, from outside of the economy um, uh, rather than within okay so clearly that obviously is a, a bit of an issue and it's one of the uh, macroeconomic targets that the government tries to uh, tries to balance where possible but clearly that's not necessarily a straightforward uh, thing to achieve
um, you should be able to see hopefully you can see I think uh, that the the click uh, if you click on the um, uh, national accounts um, uh, detail here on the ONS the Office of National Statistics gives uh, quite a nice breakdown of the way in which the balance of payments is broken down and uh, and they, they issue the ONS issue this on a regular basis as a as a, a measure to see how well or otherwise we are doing as a country um, so uh, that again is another um, another uh, chart that's that's quite revealing and again you could be asked some questions on what uh, how is how is this made up and what what is the current account balance doing so in being able to interpret that information and give some sort of idea as to how things have changed is, uh, is going to be something that you might need to do. Okay. Um, there's a short five minute video that again, um, on the PowerPoint that I'll send to you on Google Classroom, you should be able to go and have a look at it. It gives quite a nice breakdown on the current account and the way in which it's made up and it sort of summarizes what we've just talked about really uh, so i'll give you five minutes to have a click on that um, and um, have a have a take a few notes add some notes to your booklet um, which just gives you some insights into the current account and how it's uh, how it's broken down Um, more things that we can do, more uh, sets of data that you can take a look at. So the IMF, the International Monetary Fund, um, uh, has produced a whole bunch of data sets on the balance of payments. As you can see, it's a, um, a website that actually, when you click on it, and again, I'm not sure whether you're going to be able to see this, but when you click on the link, uh, that live link provided, you've got it as a, a full screen um, presentation being shown, will go straight to, uh, in this case, um, some data on, and I'll just to make it slightly bigger, uh, data on different parts of the world and different countries, um, all um, showing the, the current account balance and its percentage. Um, uh, and as you can see in this instance, we're talking about um, how that's made up and uh, in some instances how, uh, how good, bad or indifferent um, different parts of the world, different economies are in terms of um, managing their balance of payments um, and where their current account balance is. Okay, so that's something that you can go and take a look at and maybe have some examples. Obviously, you can look at the UK as an example, but maybe have one other example at your fingertips so that if you had to compare one country with another, clearly we have a fairly significant current account deficit. Um, so maybe it would be nice to find an example of a country that's got a current account balance and then think about the reasons why they might have a current account balance. Okay, but that's something that you can do um, at your leisure by having a look at that in a little bit more detail. Okay, so let's move back to um, looking at uh, the current account and, and having a look at that as a comparison. Uh, along the lines of what the, as we've just described, but let's then take a look at the next part. Then, okay, so we've talked about the the, uh, the uh, current account in quite a lot of detail. Um, we haven't really talked too much about the capital account, but there's a cap, but a definition in your booklet on both the capital account and the financial account, which just gives you a little bit more detail. Okay, so capital account, relatively small um, part of the the overall. Uh, picture as far as the balance of payments is concerned, but it's to do with the transactions in fixed assets, okay? Things like sale of patents or copyrights. Um, so, uh, if you like, it's like the invisible assets, it's intangible assets, isn't it? Transfer of ownerships of, uh, of fixed assets, such as the sale of land, all those sorts of things, okay? Um, the financial account then is, um, again, a little bit more detail, just tells you about the financial um, or the rec record of payments for international purchase and uh, sale of financial assets okay and that's something that a financial asset is considered to be something that's owned uh, in order to yield some sort of financial gain and there's a few examples here if we take a look at oops uh, so these are all different types of um, 
financial assets okay a UK resident buying shares on the UK stock market that clearly is a financial asset because we spent some money uh, the UK residents spent some money on the US stock market and the hope is that those uh, stocks and shares are going to improve in value increase in value and that becomes a financial asset that uh, we gain, gain from we gain a find some sort of financial um, benefit from that um, another example could be a Chinese resident buying UK government bonds. Well, there seems to be quite a few uh, residents from all around the world at the moment uh, buying government bonds, and that's the reason why the government can afford to um, uh, put significant amounts of money into uh, trying to uh, improve the situation that we find ourselves in due to the uh, the pandemic. Um, but um, uh, an Indian firm such as Tata is another example investing in Jaguar Land Rover. That would be, that's definitely a financial asset um, uh, purchase on their part. Uh, and what they're trying to do, obviously, is to get some financial gain from that. So a few examples there for you to take a look at, okay? However, there's one point that I do need you to sort of have a little think about. So if an individual buys a share in a foreign company, the payment for this share would be recorded in the financial account in this area here so if we actually have made a purchase okay uh, in a foreign country uh, a foreign company um, however if uh, we receive a dividend on that particular share that would actually be recorded in the current account okay because it's um, uh, um, an investment that has yielded some return it's essentially almost like a sale of some descriptions and we've uh, received something for it okay okie dokie so uh, just to, as a, uh, to reiterate, okay, there are three elements to the balance of payments, okay, so it's a bit of a revision if you like. Um, the current account, which is the record of the current country's transactions in imports and export terms, um, including some investment income uh, uh, from and transfers from around the world. Um, and then we've got the capital account, relatively small part, and that balances up. Um, as you'd expect the balance of payments, you'd expect it to balance with me in the same way as a balance sheet does. Um, so uh, that's a record of the country's financial transactions with the rest of the world. Okay, so let's move on. So a little bit more on the uh, on the components of the balance of payments then always going to be the overall balance of payments will always be zero. Okay, so if you think about it, now think about some of the terms that we've used and these terms will become more and more familiar when we start to look at the um, components of the balance of payments okay um, but in this instance if we're running a current account deficit i.e that means that we are buying more imports than we're exporting okay then that's balanced up by um, the uh, the financed buy if you like the financial uh, financial account surplus which means that we must be either selling assets or borrowing from overseas in order to pay for imports consumed okay so there's always going to be um, uh, one one element is always going to balance the other um, okay so otherwise obviously it wouldn't be the balance of payments would it okay um, so um, if we're talking about the opposite then okay if we're in a the happy position where a country is running a large current account surplus okay which means that we're actually um, trading in goods and services to a greater extent and selling uh, more than we're buying um, then in that instance then that does give you scope to actually run financial account deficits which essentially means that uh, you can use your surplus to buy um, other uh, overseas assets or to lend to other countries okay so if we were in that happy position we could use that to actually generate more income for ourselves too okay so what i'd like you to do next then um and i'm going to uh, stop and allow you to do that and then obviously we'll move on again is to take a look at the uh, details on different types of financial transaction uh, and that includes direct investment portfolio investment financial derivatives other investments and reserve assets and that, um, there's some notes in your booklet that I'd just like you to have a read through, make sure that you understand them. If necessary, go and do a little bit more research to make sure that you've understood. Um, and that is the next activity I'd like you to consider. Okay, so um, I think we might stop there and take a break and uh, I'll come back and we'll talk through some balance of payment calculations um, 
on the next video okay so thank you for listening once again any questions on anything any of the stuff we've gone through today um my plan is to do um a, like a drop-in session at the end of these uh, narrated powerpoint so please um save those questions up and then obviously we can try and deal with them in those um in those uh drop-in sessions okay thank you very much